Hi and welcome back with another video tutorial. In this video, I'll be showing you how I texture my character in Substance Render. So, uh, in a couple of few videos back, I baked my character, and uh, most of max, uh, most of the maps I baked are ambient occlusion, normal, world based normal, curvature, thickness, and position maps. So, I will be uh, importing my mesh and importing all of my textures here in this video, and I will be plugging in all of these textures. So, as you can see, there is back face culling on my character. So, I'm just I just changed the shader and uh, to alpha blending and now the back face calling is not visible uh, i can see uh, the back face uh, faces as well so right now i'm just plugging on the different maps that i baked previously and i'm plugging them in to my substance printer i'm also changing my uh, sky dome lighting to uh, to micro studio because that's what i feel very comfortable with and i also changed uh, i also activated the temporal uh, anti-aliasing because otherwise the edges look uh, a bit jagged and uh, finally I just uh, uh, tweak the symmetry line because I want to uh, paint with symmetry otherwise it would take a lot of time to paint uh, this skin so right now I'm adding uh, a base color layer uh, with roughness and I just duplicated the layer and changed the color to red and uh, masked it through uh, masked it on ambient occlusion and uh, you can see that uh, some of the colors have been added on the texture and right now I just uh, added some skin surface noise and uh, uh, applied it to the whole part of the mesh uh, you could uh, apply different skin noises on different part of the mesh but uh, because i did that in zbrush so there is no need to uh, for me to do this here uh, so i just added skin noise because it will add some additional layer of detail so for skin uh, there are three colors that are uh, most that I, that I mostly paint on my face so uh, which is red uh, blue and the yellow so uh, for face, if you think that there are lots of uh, blood vessels underneath the skin, uh, you should paint red and on the uh, on those places. For example, uh, so you can instantly rec recognize if a person is blush is blushing. So because there is a lot of blood vessels. Uh, underneath your cheeks and the, the, when the person uh, gets excited or uh, 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 sh uh, shows uh, is shy or showing uh, feeling blushy then th all of the blood uh, gushes through and uh, visible in the cheeks so that's why it is very important that you should paint uh, uh, your cheeks uh, red because there are a lot of blood vessels going underneath and the places where you think uh, that there are a lot of beans uh, taking uh, the blood they're taking the un unoxygenated blood and you should paint blue on these on those places for example uh, uh, the jawline and uh, underneath the eyes so you should paint blue color uh, on those places and I'll, i'm also uh, tweaking with the roughness on uh, some of the places Mostly blood vessels are on the cheeks, so I add a, a bit dense or a bit harsh uh, red color on the cheeks. But uh, I add a distributed red color on the whole face by adding a fill layer and uh, just masking them out. And right now, I'm, uh, you can see that uh, for all the pores I added onto the brush, I'm masking uh, on the basis of curvature and uh, adding red color because uh, red color is uh, generally distributed uh, uh, equally at a very minimum amount through throughout the skin. But uh, on the cheeks, it is very concentrated. On the nose, it is very concentrated, and especially on the ears. So I paint uh, red color uh, manually on those places, and. Uh, for the blue color, I will be uh, adding it onto the cheeks, uh, onto the jawline. But here I'm adding a, a green color to give it a bit of a shaved look, like he shaved uh, uh, a few days back or something like this. So uh, right now you can see that I'm adding that green color and painting those out. And for uh, every paint layer that I add on each of my fill layer, uh, I will add a fill and multiply it to the mask, which I'm doing right now, and changing the balance to uh, uh, make sure that there is uh, uh, some good amount of breakup in each and every of my layer. 
and uh, skin pr uh, pinning skin process is uh, a back and forth process and I am going back and forth and tweaking my layers uh, on every step so I wanted a bit of a smoky lips so I just wanted to uh, show that so over here I am painting a, a dark purple color on the uh, underneath the eyes and on the lips uh, I will also be painting some blue or green color on the uh, underneath the eyes and I'm changing the roughness for roughness I usually paint it uh, uh, add separate layers for roughness but here uh, I just uh, decided to go with the uh, add roughness with the color so uh, I just updated my GPU drivers recently and there were some problems uh, with the texture they were showing up differently uh, in uh, on the export so uh, I just export my texture and check it in Marmoset Toolbag because there, that's where I will be finally rendering all my textures, all my character. I'm also tweaking the light and uh, see how it looks. Because in Substance there is no environment lighting, I paint uh, uh, with some studio lighting and it shows the color. But in Marmoset it's because I'm adding some environmental lighting as a fill lighting. So I want to make sure that how it looks with the environment as well. So uh, right now I'm adding some uh, green color or you can say cyan color underneath the eyes because uh, uh, there are a lot of veins passing through it. So here I'm making a the red color on the cheeks a bit spotchy but I didn't like, like that so I just removed it. So if you get for skin you can add the, the colors on different layers you could uh, add freckles and other stuff. So for the yellow color uh, I add it uh, where I think that skin is very close to the bone uh, because the bone color uh, is uh, shown through the skin. For example uh, on the forehead where the skin is very close to the bone on the jawline or mandible where the skin is very close to the bone so I add yellow color and if, as I told that for every paint layer I add a fill layer on top of it and multiply uh, it onto the paint layer so that it shows a bit of the breakup so I'm doing that. So for ev everything for every of each and every of my layer I add add breakup through the adding multiple fills and uh, uh, multiplying them on top of each other here I just wanted to so, uh, show some blood on top of it because I was making a vampire um, that uh, has been drinking a lot of blood and there is some blood on top of his uh, uh, forehead and some on lips so I'm just painting that out and uh, uh, some people use uh, texturing XYZ maps uh, for skin painting but uh, uh, for uh, skin and I generally don't like uh, adding maps because it's a very boring process for me and uh, I just want to paint the skin by myself and you can see that it's uh, very easy to paint skin and it's also very time saving. So the whole process of painting skin took me uh, 35 to 45 minutes for the texture. I would have added a lot of details on uh, on the skin but uh, like freckles and some uh, skin pores and other stuff and showed some loss of breakup but because it was a vampire I want to show uh, super smooth skin so uh, I didn't go towards freckles or some other stuff. Yeah, so uh, I like to paint my skin and uh, you could achieve some pretty decent result uh, by painting it. But uh, you could definitely achieve some uh, very nice and cool result with texturing XYZ. So you could do that if you want, but I like to paint it. So yeah. So here I'm uh, breaking up uh, the blood splashes uh, on his forehead and uh, I w didn't want it to look like it's a wound or something so I was uh, painting it with a generic red color. Uh, if it was a wound or something uh, uh, like that so then I would have added different variation of reds on, on each and every uh, piece of the layer. So here I'm adding uh, some blood on, to on, on top of his lips like he just drank some blood and there is some blood splashes uh, uh, very close to his lips so 
that's what i'm doing right now um, and i am always checking my texture in marmosa tool bag like uh, whether they look good or not i just wanted to uh, make do some tests like adding some blood on the on the, his nose as well but uh, it was looking a bit too much so i i just removed it at the end for eyes uh, you can uh, paint the eyes as well if you want to uh, but i usually like to use the sub substance eye material uh, that i downloaded from the substance source and i use that so because i painted this blood in multiple uh, paint masks as while well, i was checking uh, which paint mask has the most uh, uh, blood on it and I was uh, tweaking some of it here. I'm making sure that it is rendering correctly in my tool bag. So Yeah So uh, as you can see that I am adding uh, some of the blurriness uh, on the blood because I just want to uh, I just don't want to show it super harsh or super flat so i just wanted that hey so for uh, i was uh, testing my texture in 4k before but uh, i thought since it was a personal project why not just pump up the resolution to 8k and check it out and as you can see that the reflection got uh, super smooth on uh, 8k so yeah usually 4k would suffice it for the face and the other meshes that i included in this material but uh, yeah, you can use uh, 8K for the personal renders and other stuff. Here I'm tweaking the height and uh, checking how uh, it looks with uh, multiple uh, height variations. So, because some bug in Marmoset, there you can see the black faces are showing on the face uh, when I apply height. So, I'll just remove the height and uh, yeah rendered it without adding tessellation or other stuff so here i just added my substance eye material and uh, because the eyes were mirrored on both sides so the same texture would be applied so i'm uh, tweaking uh, where the eye should be so uh, for eyes uh, usually some people paint uh, the complete eyeball in the center of the eyes and which is wrong uh, if you do that your character will look like uh, like it's in the state of shock so uh, some of uh, for eyes it is generally very important that you cover uh, half of the eyeball under the eyelid so that it looks uh, in a normal and uh, relaxed pose otherwise it will look like a, in, it's in the state of shock so i just added my material and uh, i uh, tweaked some of the parameters of it and uh, now i'm just adding some fill layers work and uh, i will now add some paint layer on it as well and uh, which will act as an ao layer uh, because uh, I, these were in a separate big group uh, in in marmoset so uh, uh, none of the AO was painted on top of the eyes, so uh, I'm just doing it manually. I'm also adding some uh, light red color on top of it and making sure that uh, uh, the eyes uh, look super nice and uh, super red. Like uh, my vampire is uh, drunk on blood, he is drinking a lot of blood, so I'm showing that. And I will be checking it in Marmosa tool bag later on uh, because I wanted to see how it looks. So the textures uh, look uh, differently in different lighting scenarios. So that's why I'm just exporting uh, it in Marmosa tool bag and checking it how it looks with some fill lighting, fill, with some environment fill lighting as well. So that's why I export, otherwise there is no need to export, you can just uh, export it when uh, it is finally completed and uh, texture are finally painted and complete. So here I, I'm tweaking uh, the, uh, some of the color uh, on my mesh and exporting it up. For the clothes, I will be using uh, the ID mask I painted in ZBrush and you would see how super useful that ID mask is uh, 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 while texturing it.
So here I just created a folder for my clothes and added a simple material to it, changed color of it and uh, tweaked uh, the scale of uh, my material and duplicated it, changed color to black and add a mask on color selection and just masked it out. Because I have already painted the ID mask, I'm just masking my material on the basis of my ID. So you can see that how uh, super useful uh, it was to paint uh, my IDs in uh, ZBrush and baked it out. Uh, because in ZBrush I was getting an idea of how it will turn out at the end so I was that's why I was painting the IDs and now I just masked my whole material on the basis of IDs so here I just copied and painted all the black and the red materials along with the gold material and I just uh, masked the whole portion out and you can see that uh, uh, I'm using uh, IDs on some of uh, the places and uh, and some on some of the places I'm using uh, mask by mesh so yeah IDs are super uh, useful super important for example uh, if I had to paint uh, this red mask on the coat meshes it would have been super difficult for me uh, to paint it manually and it would have taken a lot of effort to mask all these portions but since I had an ID map baked uh, uh, in Marmoset so uh, through vertex color which I painted in ZBrush you could see that uh, when I yeah, pasted all those material it just uh, masked out all those portions so here I'm checking out and making sure that it looks uh, uh, good in Marmosa toolbag so right now it's uh, super clean so I will be adding some uh, variations height variations and roughness variation and I will be adding some uh, minute amount of grudge, grunge on each and every material and here I just plugged in my height map and working on with the tessellation and checking whether it looks uh, good uh, in Marmoset or not. Yeah, so uh, so the height was good uh, for the cloth pieces. I'm adding subdivisions on each and every mesh so that uh, uh, my render is super nice and clean. Well, it's all uh, very subtle details, but uh, when you render it out, it looks uh, super nice and crisp. All the details look super nice and crisp because it gives you the same quality as uh, uh, your sculpt model. So that's why I apply tessellations on it for the render pieces, not for the game model. Not for the game model, but for the render pieces. So that's why I use tessellation. Here I'm adding some of the grunge and grime, and I'm using some of the smart masks that ship with Substance Painter because I don't want to create a mask from scratch. Well, I could if it was a uh, it was a mask that wasn't already in the pre presets. But 90% of the masks that you use on your characters are present here in your smart mask set masks tab so you should use uh, those uh, masks on for your character so uh, for the gauntlet piece and for the armor pieces you would see that i will be just doing the same thing i will be just uh, copy and pasting material because all the materials are masked uh, on the basis of color selection or on the basis of ids that i baked in uh, ZBrush, I will just copy and paste it on my uh, continent material and it will uh, be applied on all the meshes. So for the inner shirt because it had a very unique pattern to it so I will be uh, importing all those uh, texture file in Substance Painter and then creating the mask on top of it. So for the belt and for the uh, uh, for the uh, this uh, armor pieces, the black metal armor pieces. I'm just uh, using a steel gun uh, painting material here and tweaking some of the parameters uh, on it, like changing the scale, changing some of the roughness values, and uh, other stuff. And here you can see that uh, on the belt, on the lower belt, I just masked uh, this um, material on the basis of the ID mask. For, on some places I'm using mesh masking, on some places I'm using uh, uh, paint masking and on some places I'm using uh, mask by ID. So here you will clearly see that uh, uh, for the inner pattern uh, you could see that up I applied a black color in ZBrush and uh, now I will be masking uh, on that because otherwise uh, I would have to paint all those edges manually. 
so here the uh, whole pattern is applied on each and every flash so i'm adding a mask by 80s uh, here and you could see that yeah so i ha i didn't have any need to paint uh, on the edges of the shirt to mask it up i just did a mask by ids on top of it so I will be creating a group on top of it because for the inner pattern it is uh, right now it is very uh, smooth and simple so uh, I will be adding some variations to it and uh, variation I will be adding some variations uh, on the basis of uh, materials and because the mask is will be uh, drive through the pattern that I have already added you can see that I'm just uh, copying and painting the mask on top of it and just scaling it out and you can see the all the uh, material details of uh, the polyester uh, material is added onto this this piece of cloth uh, otherwise uh, it uh, the whole uh, texturing process took me uh, uh, three uh, hours uh, three to four hours but if I didn't have the ID map, it would have uh, took me two to three days to just paint all the mask and complete the texturing process. So that's why I'm saying it again and again. So if you're painting some things, some mask in ZBrush or anything like that, just bake it out uh, when you are baking it in Marmoset tool bag. Don't just wait all those effort of uh, painting and masking each and every stuff in ZBrush uh, because you could uh, always use uh, those uh, color mask uh, for uh, always use those colors as a mask in Substance Painter. Here I just painted all those uh, materials, uh, copied and pasted uh, all those materials on my uh, separate uh, uh, material, and you can see that it has uh, automatically masked uh, on the all the portion based on the based on the IDs. Uh, for some uh, places, there were some uh, issues that uh, so I'm fixing those up uh, because I just wanted it to look. Uh, really nice and smooth uh, because some in some cases the ID mess up a little bit and you uh, I was tweaking just those up. yeah so yeah that's all from me thanks for watching see you in the next video